So frequency modulation synthesis was designed by John Chowning at Stanford. And if you, if you watch his interviews, he will tell you that he discovered it by accident because he was playing with a modular and he was modulating the, the, the pitch of one oscillator with the output of another oscillator that was operating in the audio range. It wasn't a low frequency oscillator. It was just an oscillator. And this is a long time ago, isn't it? This is oh, yeah, this like late predates, 60s. Or yeah, 70s. predates like the DX7 and all that. No, no, DX7 wasn't until the 80s. Yeah. It's, like, um, it's like it took a while for, for computer processing power to reach the point where you could do it in real time. Okay. Um, so, because he discovered it in the analog world. He just, what happened was he took two oscillators and he tuned them to the same pitch, but had one modulate the other. And that gives you a one to one ratio. So, for those of you who are just getting started, okay, so let's, let's okay, so now I'm put, put my professor hat on. <laughs> put um, the vape down. <laughs> okay, so FM, okay, so the frequency of a waveform determines its pitch. So frequency modulation is literally translates to pitch modulation. And the most common form of pitch modulation on a synthesizer is vibrato. Mm -hmm. So if you take a triangle wave LFO, LFO standing for low frequency oscillator, you take a triangle wave LFO and you apply it to the pitch of your O oscillator, you will get vibrato. So if, if you increase the rate of your LFO so that it is low frequency oscillator, but just an oscillator, and you modulate another oscillator, you will generate side bands. One of the things that John Chowning discovered is in his in his discovery of FM synthesis is that if you tune your oscillators to one of the harmonics, that is to say, each harmonic is a is a linear multiple of the fundamental frequency. So if your if your oscillator is playing C three, the sec the first harmonic is going to be the fundamental. That'll be harmonic one C three, and if you play an octave higher C four, that'll be the second harmonic. And the third harmonic up is the G above C4. And then the fourth harmonic is two octaves higher. And they go on and on and on. So John, I'll just call him John, like we're buddies. John, <laughs> John Chowning came up with this, this idea that if you started tuning your oscillators to exact harmonic multiples, you would generate musically interesting results. And that is FM synthesis. Mm. Um, and Yamaha popularized that in the, in the, they started doing really expensive stuff in the late seventies, but really popularized it in the, the 80 for, you know, this year, which a half a million dollars in seventies dollars, um, had FM synthesis. So FM synthesis, the Yamaha democratized that with the DX seven mm -hmm. and Ableton has a version that's sort of like a weird hybrid because the, the Synclavier had additive synthesis in it, which the DX7 did not have. The DX7 only did FM with sine waves. So there are elements of the Synclavier in operator, and there are elements of the of the of the uh, of the DX7 in operator. So that's FM synthesis. So basically it's just really fast vibrato that's tuned in a meaningful way to whatever oscillator you're modulating. Hmm. Subtractive synthesis is taking a harmonically rich waveform, like a sawtooth or a, 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 a square wave or white noise. So you've got lots of harmonics happening in those waveforms. And then you subtract from them using your filter, like a Moog low-pass filter. Moog was like the, the sort of dominant mo low-pass filter. Um, and every low-pass filter is sort of, uh, it's own, like it's own, the own, you're, another company's version of, of, of the, the Moog low-pass concept. And what low pass filters do is they, is they remove high frequencies. So you take a harmonically rich waveform and you remove those frequencies with a low pass filter. And then there are other filters like the high pass filter. Um, you'll find those on Roland's um, or uh, uh, you can have a state variable filter, which can continuously morph between different filter types. And that was introduced in the, in the Oberheim SEM in the 70s. So then the third, so the third kind that we're going to talk about, then we've got sampling and wavetable and all that stuff. Those are, I mean, wavetable is really subtractive synthesis, but instead of sawtooths and squares, you're using these very highly customizable 
um, multidimensional waveforms, um, wa arrays of waveforms called um, called wave tables. Um, and then additive synthesis is actually diving in and controlling each of those individual harmonics that I just talked about. So that first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, et cetera. And you can, you can adjust the levels of each of those harmonics individually, adding them together, hence the name additive, and then design your own sounds really kind of almost at the quantum level or the molecular level because you're, you're controlling the volumes of each of these sine waves. Um, if you want to get into history a little bit more, the first additive synth, the main of you know, the 20th century, we could go back to the pipe organ, but I don't feel like going all the way back to, to that. <laughs> but was it the Hammond B3, or if you want, the Tel Harmonium by Thaddeus Cahill? But but what we're talking about, we're talking about the um, we're talking about like the the, the mainstream one, and the, the Hammond B3. You've got these draw bars, and each of those draw bars correlates with a harmonic. And they're done with these little spinning bakelite discs and tone wheels inside the organ. Mm -hmm. And by combining different draw bar combinations, you're adding together the different harmonics to create the sound of the organ that we define. So mm -hmm. in operator, you've got control over 64. The Hammond B3 had eight or nine. And if you want to get into the, the percussive stops and that sort of thing. But getting back to operator, operator's got this array of up to 64 harmonics per oscillate and you buy by changing the volumes of those you can you can create your own sounds by adding sine waves together hence the name additive 